The final lipoprotein that we're going to talk about will be HDL, high density lipoprotein. And as you might already know, this is what we call good cholesterol. And that's because HDL contains anti-inflammatory and anti-thrombotic properties. In addition, it plays a very important role in the reverse cholesterol transport pathway. Now, we'll talk about the reverse cholesterol transport pathway in the next lecture. In this lecture, I'd like to focus on the life cycle of an HDL molecule. So we're going to talk about how we build an HDL molecule, how the esterification process takes place, and finally, how we metabolize and break down HDL molecules in the body. So let's begin with the synthesis of HDL. Now for an HDL molecule to actually be able to exist, it has to have an important core protein, a structural protein. And this structural protein is known as apolipoprotein A1. Now apolipoprotein A1 predominantly is produced in the liver and to a smaller extent our intestines. So the intestines and the liver produces apolipoprotein A1 and releases it into the circulation. And this apolipoprotein A1 now circulates in the bloodstream and as it travels past the capillaries of extra hepatic cells such as cardiac cells and skeletal muscle cells and adipose cells as well as hepatocytes and enterocytes, as it passes by it receives cholesterol molecules from these cells and also, and also phospholipids. Now the phospholipids simply come from the cell's membrane. But the free cholesterol actually has to come from within. And the transporter protein that shuttles these free cholesterol particles across the cell membrane is known as ABCA1. So ABCA1 is the transporter protein present on the cell surface of extra hepatic cells, hepatic cells, and pterocytes, and allows the quick movement of these free cholesterol into the uh, the circulating apolipoprotein A1. And initially we create this immature nascent HDL molecule that contains a relatively disc-like shape. Now if we have a mutation in the ABCA1 protein, this becomes dysfunctional. And this is what we call Tangier's disease. In Tangier's disease, this has a loss of function, so we can't shuttle these free cholesterol particles into this circulating apolipoprotein A1, and so as a result, we can't build a lot of HDL molecules. And so in patients with, uh, with Tangier's disease, we're going to have high levels of cholesterol inside the cells. Essentially, they're going to be trapped because we can't shuttle them across this transporter, and we're going to uh, have a relatively low number of HDL HDL particles in the blood. But let's suppose we don't have Tangier's disease and this ABCA1 is fully functional. So as we're receiving a bunch of these free cholesterol particles from the cells, we're also receiving free cholesterol particles and phospholipids from circulating lipoproteins such as chylomicron CM and VLDL. So in addition, the HDL particles also obtain free cholesterol from chylomicrons and VLDL particles. And as the nascent HDL accumulates more and more of these free cholesterol particles and phospholipids, it changes its disc-like shape to a more spherical shape, but it's not yet mature. For the HDL molecule to become relatively large and spherical and mature, we have to convert the free cholesterol to esterified cholesterol or cholesterol esters. The free cholesterol stays on the surface and that gives the HDL a disc-like shape. But once we convert the free cholesterol into cholesterol esters, then we can move it into the core of that HDL molecule and that bulks it up and gives it a sphere-like shape and now we call it a mature HDL particle. So the cholesterol obtained from cells and other lipoproteins is unesterified and must remain on the surface of the immature HDL particle. For the HDL to become mature, the cholesterol must be esterified and then we can move the esterified cholesterol into the core of the HDL giving it a spherical shape. But for this to happen, we have to have a presence of an enzyme known as LCAT. 
So L stands for lecithin, C stands for cholesterol, and AT stands for acyl transferase. So lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase. And what this enzyme does is it's basically an enzyme present in the serum, and when it associates with the HDL molecule, it transfers a fatty acid component from lecithin onto cholesterol, and that creates cholesterol ester. And this is a more hydrophobic molecule, and so we can move it into the core of that particle, and that gives it a very mature spherical shape. Now, if we have a deficiency, either a complete deficiency or a partial deficiency in the LCAT, this will create problems. So we're not gonna be able to actually move the cholesterol into the core, and so the shape will remain relatively immature and disc-like, and so that will create problems, and so we're gonna have relatively low levels of HDL in our blood. And once again, we're gonna have a lot more cholesterol deposit in, in uh, the cells, and so, in fish eye disease, we call it fish eye disease because over time, cholesterol deposits inside the cornea of the eyes, and so that creates cloudy eyes. And so that's why we call it fish eye disease. And this is a very relatively rare condition. So we're over here. So essentially, we have a relatively spherical LH, uh, HDL molecule that is mature. And so this is our apolipoprotein A1 shown in blue. Now, for LCAT to actually be fully functional, this apolipoprotein A1 has to act as a cofactor to stimulate the activity of LCAT. So we see that this apolipoprotein A1 has two important functions. Number one, it gives the structure to the entire HDL particle, and number two, it catalyzes or increases the uh, uh, efficiency of LCAT. And without apolipoprotein A1, we can't carry out this process of esterifying cholesterol. Now, once we form the mature HDL particles, these can do two things. The HDL particles can either be taken up by the liver or they can interact further with chylomicrons, VLDL particles, and LDL particles. So basically we have an exchange taking place. The HDL particles can take triglycerides from these particles and in exchange, it can give cholesterol particles. And so we can have this exchange take place in which the HDL loses cholesterol and gains triglycerides, and so now we're at this stage here. And for this to happen, we have to have an enzyme known as CETP. So CETP catalyzes the transfer, the exchange between cholesterol and triglycerides between the HDL particle and other lipoproteins which contain apolipoprotein B, such as chylomicrons, VLDL particles, and LDL particles. Now we're here. The next process is, so we have these HDL particles that contain a bunch of cholesterol esters in the core. We have triglycerides, we have phospholipids, and we have the apolipoprotein A1, as well as other apolipoproteins. And now what happens is it travels back to the liver. And in the liver on cells, we have an enzyme known as hepatic lipase. And what a hepatic lipase does is it breaks down triglycerides into fatty acids. So the triglycerides received from these other lipoproteins is now broken down into fatty acids and absorbed by the hepatocytes. And so now we begin to remove the triglycerides. In addition, we have a receptor on hepatocytes known as scavenger receptor type B, so SRB1. And what this receptor allows us to do is it allows the HDL particle to bind onto hepatocytes. And as it's bound, it basically allows the movement of cholesterol into the cell. And so here we're moving, we're absorbing triglycerides, and here we're absorbing the cholesterol particles. And eventually, the majority of the cholesterol and triglycerides are absorbed, and now we form this remnant HDL particle that contains very few fat molecules and that apolipoprotein A1. And so the final step in the metabolism of this remnant HCL is it's essentially filtered in the kidneys, so it's filtered by the glomerulus, but it's reabsorbed back in the renal tubules. And inside the kidneys, the kidneys actually metabolize and break down that apolipoprotein A1.
So to summarize, let's quickly go through this entire process and let's begin here. So the synthesis of an HDL molecule and the mature HDL molecules begins predominantly in the, in, in the liver and to a smaller extent our intestines. That's where we produce apolipoprotein A1. That moves into the bloodstream and circulates through the capillaries. And so on extrahepatic cells and hepatic cells and enterocytes, we have the transport of protein called ABCA1, and that shuttles a bunch of free cholesterol into this immature HDL particle. In addition, we also receive free cholesterol from circulating chylomicrons and VLDL particles. In addition, we receive phospholipids from the cell membranes of all of these cells. And so we begin to build up this immature nascent HDL molecule. Now, initially, this shape is a discoid shape, and that's because all those free cholesterol mo uh, molecules are found on the surface of this particle. Then we have an enzyme known as LCAT. So LCAT is an enzyme in a serum that associates with the HDL, and its activity is increased by apolipoprotein A1. And so what LCAD does is it transfers a fatty acid from lecithin onto the free cholesterol to essentially form our cholesterol ester. And now this particle is very hydrophobic and it goes into the core of the HDL particle and that gives it a very spherical shape. And at this point we call it a mature HDL particle. Now, the mature HDL particle can simply go on and bind onto scavenger receptor B1, where the majority of the free cholesterol is taken up by the hepatocytes, and the remaining forms the remnant HDL. Or, this HDL particle can also associate, once again, with chylomicrons, VLDL particles, LDL particles, and guided by the enzyme CETP, we can exchange cholesterol from tri uh, with triglycerides. So, the HDL particle gains triglycerides, it gives away cholesterol, and so now we form this slightly modified HDL particle that contains some triglycerides, some cholesterol esters, a bunch of phospholipids, and proteins. And now this particle essentially associates with the liver where we have an enzyme called hepatic lipase, begins to break down the triglycerides, that's absorbed into the liver cells, then via the activity of scavenger receptor B1, we are able to absorb the free cholesterol and eventually we form the remnant HDL particle that contains very few cholesterol and fat molecules and this apolipoprotein A1, and then that is filtered by the, glomerulus, uh, by the glomeruli in the kidneys and reabsorbed or by the renal tubules and the kidneys do the final step of breaking down and recycling the apolipoprotein A1. So we see that the ultimate process of forming HDL molecules is to allow us to move the fats and phospholipids and cholesterol from all these cells back into the liver. And the liver is able to actually excrete all that cholesterol via bile, by forming bile. So in the next lecture, we're going to talk about the reverse cholesterol transport pathway.